I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I was having a conversation with Alan just the other day, and he made a really interesting comment that I think is worth diving into. And that was, he said, well, you know, it suddenly occurred to me, this is in his voice, that maybe the reason that I'm really interested in exploring so many new countries now that I've moved to Nicaragua is that... Now I know I'm able to. And this is an interesting point. We talk about this kind of stuff a bit when we're talking about the power of the expat and the uh, the barrier that you cross when you first move to a new country or to a new region and suddenly realize how easy that region is to work with or what it's actually like and you have some idea of what to expect. But then other regions have some exoticism and you're interested in learning more. So I want to dive into this a little bit on today's show. So let's talk about that right after that bump. Let's start the day by saying thanks to Marcella, who got me this new hat. So I'm trying this out on the show. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And as always, get down in those comments, say hello, and ask any questions that you might have. And of course, we always invite you to take a video of yourself and send it in. All the instructions are down there in the show notes, and you can send me a video of yourself. I can put you on the show and answer questions that way. That's a lot of fun for everybody. And we do have some of those that I've received, and I need to actually get to them and get them on the show as well. But uh, I, so... You know, in, in many times we talk about expats and all the things that change for you and, and how easy it is. Like, like people worry, what if I choose the wrong country or what if I move to a country and things change or, or uh, suddenly it's no longer um, something that is affordable for me or my lifestyle changes and it's no longer the right fit. And we say, well, why don't you just move on? Like, it's so easy. It was so easy to move here. It's so easy to move on if that's what you need to do. And it doesn't matter where you're really looking at. This applies everywhere. And I mean, some places are hard to move to, but moving on to someplace else is not. That's an easy thing. In most cases, it's very rare that you're going to have a hard time moving on. Once you've done it once, it just gets easier and easier. And this is an important concept that when you're talking to someone about their first time moving, it can be very difficult. It's very scary. There's all these things you worry about. And of course, there's a lot of unknowns and there's a lot of, oh, I didn't think about that. So that's why we try to put together an expat relocation guide and we talk about these things a lot and we do the live stream and answer questions and we do these Q&As is because people have these questions. And once they've done it, most people are like, oh, obviously. And then they can do it themselves the next time. And it's really easy. And for Alan, this is the first place that he ever moved to this being Nicaragua. He lives here in Leon. And when we travel, because he's been to a few other countries in the meantime, such as Costa Rica and Panama and Bolivia and Spain and England, and having spent time now living in Nicaragua, having made the move from the United States to Nicaragua, this took him from maybe someday I'd like to research and move somewhere abroad, which is where he was maybe eight years ago, to having done that research, having made that decision, having come to a country, having it been a great experience, he really likes the country. And then when he travels to other places, suddenly he sees other, so first of all, he's able to easily travel to other countries. And of course, anyone might be doing that before they move to their first country, but he was not. This was not just a relocation barrier for him, but it was a vacation barrier as well, a travel barrier. He was not used to just hopping a plane or whatever and going on to over a frontera, over a border and going to a new country and experiencing it. So that entire concept is relatively new to him. Of course, he always knew he could, but you have this mental barrier. We all do that. We've never done it. So it's, it feels like a big thing. You don't do it casually. And then once you've done it once or twice, suddenly you can do it casually. And that's what I was saying to someone today saying, you know, my kids, sometimes they just want food from Costa Rica. We can just go. We don't have to stop and think a bit about it. We don't have to make big plans. We have to do anything. Just hop on a bus, buy a ticket off to Costa Rica. We go. We, we know to grab our passports. We know which credit cards to grab. We know what to pack for a few days in San Jose, right? We don't have to do a bunch of planning. We don't have to do a bunch of discussing and we're not stressed at all. It's just, oh yeah, okay, let's go. Same as running around the corner. Same as going to, you know, if you live in New York, going to Chicago. It's that easy. It's that simple. So when you're uh, crossing this barrier, you're getting into your first time traveling, uh, like Alan did with his relocation and travel as new things. Well, it opened up the door for him and he started traveling. Like I said, he's been to several countries. He's been to more countries on average per month than he was in his it, per lifetime prior to moving to Nicaragua. Right. So that's, that's amazing. That's a 
complete change of lifestyle for one, but mentality for another. It opens up the world to you in interesting new ways. So he's seeing the world in this way of, oh, there's a cool country. I could just travel there, which everyone should have that feeling. But until you do it, you generally won't. So that's fantastic. But for example, we went to Bolivia last year, and while in Bolivia, one of his experiences was looking around at neighborhoods that we were staying in and restaurants we were visiting, and of course his reaction, and I have this reaction quite often when I go places, and you guys often enjoy me having these feelings and talking about it when I'm doing walk-arounds in different places, especially different countries or different barrios or whatever, talking about what a lifestyle in this particular place might be like, how it would be different from what I have currently, why it would be interesting, what would be cool about it, what might be negative about it, and, and just envisioning myself in those places. I mean, like, would I like this? What would I like about it? Would I like it over what I'm doing now? How would it be different? Would it be something to replace what I do? Is it something to supplement what I do? All kinds of ideas. And Alan is now having those feelings, like in Bolivia when we go there, He's able to look at that place with not just a traveler's interest, but he's also looking at it with the excitement of someone who could consider it to be a place that he might want to move to. That's a completely different mindset and something that I never really thought about in that context. For me, I've had this mindset for a really long time because I started moving abroad and started researching and, and trying to live in different places long ago. So I long ago got over this barrier and I was very excited about the prospect of it before that. So I had a lot of kind of build up to it that a lot of people don't have. But seeing Alan go through this transition where he suddenly becomes excited about the possibilities that a new country offers. He's no longer worried about moving to that country. He's not like, oh, but it's so hard to do that. No, he's done it. He knows he can just get on a plane, pack some luggage, maybe do some quick research on what residency requirements are going to be, how long his tourist visa is going to last. Well, go try it out for the length of a tourist visa. Do some research about residency. Come back to Nicaragua in this case. Do some uh, paperwork to get long-term residency because you exhausted your, your tourist visa. Return with residency or whatever you need to do and try living in a new place. Now, he hasn't done this yet, but he knows he can. He knows that it's so easy and accessible to him that all he has to do is find a place that truly piques his interest and pull the trigger and he can go. And whether it's for a few months or a few years or open-ended with no plan to return, but of course the option that's a really powerful place to be, and it creates excitement. And it's not just an option. It's not just this important protection. We've talked about that on the channel previously, how the ability to move abroad quickly and easily is safety for you anywhere. Even if you don't end up moving abroad, or you do move abroad and then move back home, and you don't, become, you don't stay an expat, knowing that you have the power to do it, having the tool set at your disposal, and breaking down the mental barrier the mental frontera to doing these things is, is so important. And once you've done that, you just emotionally have this power to explore the world as a person living in the world, not just traveling, but living around the world. And it lets you see the world through these eyes of a person who can, in most cases, simply decide to live somewhere. Now, not everyone can live just everywhere, and some people have big barriers to living some places and little ones to living in other. For example, moving to a Nicaragua or a Costa Rica or a Panama or a Colombia, those places are relatively easy for most of my audience to choose to do so. But there's a few of you for whom some of those or all of those are quite hard. And there are other countries that the majority of my audience would struggle to move to, but could if they put in a lot of effort, uh, Russia or Venezuela or Iran, right? So those places, while eventually Available, aren't as easy as just show up and, and see what happens, right? So you have to do some research, you have to do some planning, but most places that you go, there is going to be some option if that's a place you truly become passionate about. And if all you want to do is stay for, as long as they decide to let you, well, months, maybe years, hey, take your chances, ask, what, what are they going to do? Say no, move on somewhere else. But they might say yes, and if it's the place you want to be, Give it a shot. Why not? When I lived in Italy, I remember this amazing moment. And I've talked about this, but it's been a while. I was walking with my children, and we were just coming down. We was in Noto, Italy, in, in the southeast of Sicily, Sicily south of Syracuse. And uh, we were just coming around a road, just a normal road, nothing special. And there was an apartment building, nothing special, three stories. And there was a light on in the window. And I talked about, and I thought about what it means to, what it would be like to live there? What it would it be like? to live in this place. Now we were living in Italy at the time, but imagine you're on vacation and you're just walking through a place and you walk by and you see an apartment 
and a light in a window. And you say, this life, I imagine, would be something I'm really interested in. I like the restaurants that are on the street. I like the smell of the air and the feel of the weather and the way that the rain bounces off the roofs. And I like the cars that I see going up and down the road. And I like the coffee I had for breakfast this morning. And I like the conversations I had with the old guy sitting on the bench in the park. And this is a place I want to, I want to give it a try. And you're in Italy and you just go, there's got to be a way. And, and likely there is. Now, maybe you just stay like some places. Maybe you stay for a while. Maybe you have to apply for further residency while you're there. Maybe you have to leave, apply, and return. Everywhere's a little bit different. But in most places that you're going to be interested in, you can simply make it happen if that's what you want to do, um, at least to give it a try, at the, at the very least, to give it a try, knowing that, that, that watching Alan make that transition from this being a new thing that he was worried about and unsure about to a thing he's confident in and realized, and it was such a cool realization, that he's able to go look at a Bolivia and make the judgment call, wait, I, if, if this really interests me, why not give it a try? Or Argentina that we were just in, which is a pretty easy country to move to at this time, right? They're very welcoming of Americans, especially. Uh, it's easy with the passport. It's easy with the paperwork. It's easy to get extensions. All the different pieces are pretty easy, except for that banking thing. But it's doable, right? A pretty minor thing overall. It's cost effective, an important point. And so different than Nicaragua that, you know, I've lived in a lot of places that were super different. Romania, Greece, Spain. But... You know, if you haven't and you're, you're seeing an Argentina, a Bolivia with these, these big cities and this very urbane lifestyle and you're coming from Nicaragua, it's very urban, nothing's stopping you. You can just explore. You can just give it a try. What a powerful mental place to be in. I think a lot of my audience kind of sense that. I think a lot of you guys are like, oh, you know, right now we're living in the little GoPro box, but we could move to a new place. And there's something about doing that that gives this comfort, this sense of safety, this sense of wide-eyed wonderment and exploration. And I understand some of that is because I'm me and I have a whole bunch of feelings of safety and comfort and wide-eyed excitement about seeing the world. I love having a coffee and watching the world go by and I love telling you guys about it, right? So these are things that make me excited, especially so somewhat you're sensing that, but there's more to it. I think a lot of you are sensing through me and other people that you see on the channel and me talking about people on the channel like Alan, this, you, you see people who have come and anyone you see on the channel definitely has overcome the travel barrier, but some of them are overcoming the living abroad barrier. They're able to experience the world as a resident or an expat going to other places and having the option of staying and the option of moving on, the option of exploring the world. And most of you have it, but your mind, your heart aren't giving you those options. You might be able to empirically say, well, yes, I can move to another country, but is it something that you're grokking? Is it something that you've wrapped your mind around and you feel comfortable simply doing so? Would you be comfortable walking out the door this afternoon and going to another country open-ended and just say, hey, I'm going to give it a try because it's so easy, because I can just pick a place on the map that seems really interesting, whether it's Italy or Zanzibar or South Korea or, or Indonesia or Costa Rica, and simply go and discover and learn and say, this is right, or it's not 100% perfect and course correct. Try another place, whatever it takes. Having that barrier come down is so powerful. And it's just, I'm just excited to see that happen and see him have this realization that that is what happened and articulate it. And I'm like, wow, that's a really cool articulation of that. It's just so interesting and exciting. And, and I wanted to share that with you guys, both as a, that was a cool thing that came up, but also as a thing, this is something you can look forward to and something to realize could be happening when you go when you do this, when you move to a new place. First of all, when you're visiting, realize you're breaking down travel barriers. When you start really envisioning everything you look at as, ooh, what if I lived here? It's a whole different way to see the world. I was out driving with my daughters two days ago in Santo Domingo in, in Managua. This is the, well, it was really Los Altos de Santo Domingo in the area near Las Colinas. Uh, these are the, the heights, the, the hilly area uh, to the southeast of Managua. And we ended up in some really interesting areas where we were walking through or driving through some very small back roads that went through areas that are nothing like we've seen in other parts of Nicaragua. Uh, tight roads and very European styled and, and little tiny bistros and shops around little 
corners and clearly things that are not advertising to, you know, people on the on the main roads or whatever. There's no plaza. Completely different experience. And it was so cute. And immediately my kids, having lived lots of places, and I are immediately together like, ooh, what would it be like to live here? What would, it, what would the shopping be like? How long does it take to get downtown? What would you do for your weekend fun? How do you go out and get a pizza? Like, we start thinking through what would life like be, be like? And, and immediately they were like, this is a place we could consider. We would consider living here. All right, because I want to live in Leon, but they are considering a bigger city and uh, when they're older, right? They're, they're a little bit young yet, but they're, they're thinking about when they move out uh, that they might want to be in a larger city. One, they don't want to have to drive. They have a bunch of requirements. They, they're thinking about these things in good ways. And being kids who grew up living around the world, they're really well equipped to make good thought processes about what constitutes a great place for them to live. But coming through a neat neighborhood, their reaction was to evaluate it in such a way, knowing they, this is open to them. I could live here. Here's what I think about what I'm seeing. Now, we didn't spend a lot of time. We didn't dig into it. But we drove around quite a bit, looked at houses, looked at condos, looked at communities, looked at restaurants and shopping and, and, and different ways of connecting to the main highway. And we were only there for maybe half an hour. But in doing that, this erupting conversation of, of interest and their thoughts are very much like Alan's that now when he went to Bolivia, he was able to simply go around and look at it as opportunity for living instead of a place to go sightsee. And that's just such a great mental place and something that I encourage you guys to as best you can think about and try to internalize that you should be in this mental place, but it's difficult. But when you do start traveling and moving and becoming an expat, if that's something you haven't done yet, that these are things you're likely to see change in yourself. And by recognizing it, by knowing that it's happening, by being able to articulate it, as Alan has, that will give you more power to realize what it is you're feeling and to empower it to, to expand, right? Instead of just being like, Oh, I'm in a new place. And oh, I'm starting to have a, oh, I, I suppose it would be cool to live here maybe. And, but to really think, wait, no, I know I could just move here. I know this is something I could consider. How do I use that information? How do I apply this to when I travel that I look around the world and, and think about real evaluations in that way? Uh, it, it changes your worldview in really interesting ways. And, uh, and I hope that, um, you guys are able to share in that kind of excitement the way that we have. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at the link above, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, get down those comments. Let us know your questions, your thoughts. Uh, say hi, all that stuff. And we do have a, a member community now. If you're interested, there's a join button right down. I think it's right there. Uh, you can join our little community and... Um, it's $5 per month, and that definitely goes a long way to help support all the work that we do here and all of this, the buy me a coffee and everything. And, and just, just watching another video, just sharing it with someone else, telling someone about the show, getting them hooked on all of those things help make this show possible. And I appreciate so much all that you guys do for the show. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.